Is your lawn suffering from an infestation of leather jackets? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how I've been able to keep these little pests at bay for the last eight years. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Michael. We are the Huttons and on this channel, we cover everything lifestyle. As parents of two wonderful girls, as well as trying to run our own successful businesses, we cover everything from house, garden, and business tips to travel vlogs and just day-to-day -day life with our girls. So today we are in the garden. It's a beautiful day, middle of September, and we are going to be talking about leather jackets. So if you're not sure what a leather jacket is, it's basically a greyish black larvae of the crane fly, which here in the UK, we call it a daddy long legs. Daddy long legs appear in your garden usually around the end of April and again at the end of August. And what they do is they lay their eggs into the lawn and those eggs hatch in about two weeks time. And then they, those larvae then start to feed off of the roots of your lawn. So if you find your lawn is looking a bit thin, uh, a bit yellow in patches, uh, then you may have an infestation of leather jackets. So I have been in this house for about eight years. It was a new build house. We laid the lawn ourselves as soon as we got in. Um, and then by the end of the first year, uh, the lawn was looking very, very thin and our patio was covered in all of these little larvae. We thought they were sort of maggots and we wondered what they were. Um, in doing some research, I found out they were leather jackets um, and I tried a few different things uh, and initially struggled, but then I come across these guys, nanotodes. These guys are brilliant. Now, some websites will say they don't work, I will say that's complete rubbish. They obviously haven't applied them in the right way. Because you've got a two week window of when those crane flies lay their eggs, you have to make sure that you apply this stuff at the right time and in the right way. If you don't get it at the right time or you don't apply it in the right way, they simply won't work. Now, if you go to the website where you can get these from, I will put a link to that in the description below. Um, you usually uh, will have to do two applications. I'll say there'll be one in around April time and then be one around September time, somewhere between August to September. And what I like about these is when you order them, you can actually order two together. So I order both of them together in April. Uh, April one gets sent out straight away. And then what they do is they just send out the next one uh, when they come available. And the timing is about right now because I'm actually finding that I'm actually getting crane flies all around the lawn over the past week. Uh, and then a couple of days ago, this order turned up in the post. Now, when this does turn up, these are live bacteria. So it is important that if you're not gonna apply them straight onto the lawn as soon as they arrive, which most people won't, put them in the fridge. Um, that's what I do. So as soon as they come through, I don't even open the bag, I just put it straight into the fridge and I keep it there until a day like today when I'm actually ready to use it. So I do recommend you do that. So what are we going to do with these guys? So basically what we're going to do, we're going to prep the lawn in a minute and I'll go through the procedure of prepping the lawn. And I'm also going to show you a little extra tip, something that I do that the instructions on this or any website that I've read doesn't really tell you to do, um, but I find it makes sense and it's worked for me. So I'll go through that with you and then I'll show you how to do these. But really what we're going to be doing is putting them into like a one of the miracle Grow feeders or, or a similar one. Um, and then use that to just disperse this across the lawn surface. What we need to do is we need to make sure that the grass is short because these nematodes, they need to get into the soil. Uh, so they need to obviously get to the surface of the soil first and we need to wash them down into the soil as deep as we can get them. So there are instructions that are provided with this, which I do follow and obviously I'll go through that. But like I say, there's a couple of extra things that I'm gonna do myself uh, just to help sort of speed up that process. First of all, we're gonna cut the lawn and we're gonna make sure that that's nice and short. Uh, and the two sort of additional things I like to do is scarify the lawn if it needs scarification uh, and then aerating the lawn as well. Aerating the lawn is obviously putting holes into the lawn to get air and nutrients into the root zone. But what we can do is once we've aerated, we can actually then get these into those holes. And I find that really effective. Once we've done that, we can then start to apply it. Now it's a very sunny day here today um, and applying these in direct sunlight is not ideal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the lawn first. I'm gonna check for scarification. I'm gonna aerate it and then I'm gonna leave it until the sun goes down a little later and then come back and then we'll start to apply these guys. 
So like I said, the first stage is to get this grass cut. I've left it a little bit long. It's been about a week since I cut this. Usually I cut it twice a week. So I'm gonna get the strimmer out. I've got the rotary mower today as well. So I'll get a nice short cut. So let's get going. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, one of the next steps I like to do after I've cut the lawn is actually start to scarify the lawn. Now this is really going to depend on the quality of your lawn. So we've got a very small lawn here, as you can see, it's about 20 square foot, it's very small um, and actually a lot of the lawn is in shade. In the middle of summer we get almost full sun, but right now, middle of September, I've got a bed and a brick wall along this side, so it's just, it's just starting to get shaded. I mean it's now midday. Um, and as I say, middle of September, and about 50% here of the lawn is now in shade. And if I look at it, it's actually starting to get a little bit patchy. Now, I don't suffer too much with thatch anyway, so I don't have to do a lot of scarification. Um, I do have a scarifier, and I'll probably do another video uh, to go through that maybe nearer next summer. Um, but here, because our lawn is quite thin anyway, there's not much thatch, um, and because the shade, the, the grass is quite a, starting to get a little bit patchy, I don't really think that I need to scarify. But to scarify, you can obviously have like an electric scarifier, which I've got. If you don't have that or you don't want to invest in it, it's perfectly fine. To be honest, you can just use a normal garden rake. Uh, I use one of those sort of wire time rakes. Um, they're really good, especially for a small lawn like this. Really, you don't need to be spending a lot of money. What I'll do though, I'll take a, I'll take you over and just show you some of the, uh, the state of the lawn. Because uh, at the moment, if you look at it, it looks pretty good from a distance. Once we get up close, you'll see that not as good as it looks from from here so here is uh, basically the the corner of the garden that actually gets the least amount of sun and as you can see when we get right down it's actually very thin we're starting to get a bit of moss in this corner we've got a few worm casts coming up um, only a little bit um, but obviously this is going to get worse as we go through the autumn and then into the winter but as i can see if you look at this we can see this the soil is nicely exposed for this exercise it's going to be really good so that's obviously really good for overseeding which we'll do uh, we'll be doing in a few weeks and i'll probably be doing another video for that as well um, but for this exercise of getting these nematodes down into the ground um, i think the quality of this lawn um, is pretty ideal really so i don't really need to do any scarification today so the other thing I mentioned after scarification is aeration. So aeration, um, hopefully you already know what that is, but for those of you that don't, it's basically a process of putting holes, small holes or large holes into your lawn to get air and nutrients down to the soil. If you've got a, over time lawn gets compact. If you've got a lawn that's got kids like we have, uh, animals, or you've just got a pathway where a lot of people are, there's a lot of traffic on the lawn, over time the, the mud gets compact. And what happens is the roots struggle to absorb nutrients and it slows growth and that type of thing. By putting small holes into the ground, or as I say, they can be large ones, and I'll go through both types in a second just gets that sort of that air and nutrients uh, into the lawn as well. So for this exercise, it's gonna be really good because I wanna get these nanotones down as deep as I can go. Now with aerating, there's two ways you can do it. You can put small little holes and you can usually get some, uh, they, they sell sandals. Um, I've actually got a, a rolling aerator again. I'll put a link in the description to the one that I'm using as well, which is pretty good. And I usually use that once a month uh, just to keep uh, little holes, it punches little holes in the ground. Um, but then once or twice a year, I like to do what they call hollow tine aeration. And that's where you put big holes in the ground. And what hollow tine does, instead of just punching holes in the ground, it actually extracts cores. Uh, so it actually extracts mud from the ground, makes holes probably maybe half an inch, depending on the aerator that you've got. Um, and it is really effective, but you can only do it at certain times a year. Um, if you do it too much in the summer, you can cause your lawn to dry out too much. Um, so usually I like to do it around sort of April time before I'm going to do my first nematodes application. And then I like to do it now around September time when I like to do my second, uh, my second application for the nematodes as well. Now, when it comes to aerating, um, there's a few different products on the market. 
and I'm really tempted to do another video on on this comparing them because I'm yet to find one that I'm happy with. Um, I have seen one online that I'm going to give a try but I haven't got around to buying it yet but I will tell you what I brought was this one. This one you will see everywhere. It is on Amazon, it is on all the kind of uh, lawn care sites. I actually have a lawn care site that I use uh, quite regularly for grass seed and I have full trust in that site and this is where I got this one from. Uh, and they've even got a video on their website showing this working. Uh, but I can tell you now, it's rubbish. It's complete rubbish. Um, and I really dislike the thing, to be honest. It's so slow trying to get holes into the lawn because it basically, it, it's it's not very sharp, even though, even when it was brand new, not very sharp, hard to push into the ground. Uh, and the cores just get stuck inside. Um, now I have seen another one online. I'll probably either put a picture or a link to the description of one that I'm looking at in the comments. Uh, of this video because I'm really keen to get people's feedback so if you've got any uh, advice or you know if you've got any experience in better aerators than this for holotine aeration I'd be really keen to uh, have a go uh, but because this is so bad today what I'm going to use is the trusty garden fork uh, now it's not ideal because what it's doing is it's just punching holes into the ground rather than extracting cores which does compact a little bit around the holes, but really any holes is good for the nematodes. We just need to open up that soil to get them down to the roots. So I'm gonna give that a go now. Now when you're aerating the lawn, it's a really good exercise it shows you where your lawn might be dry and compact already. So there's some areas I'm putting in this fork quite easily, and then others I'm having to really put a lot of weight on to get it in. And all I'm trying to do is just wiggle it in, maybe half inch to an inch, that will be fine. Uh, just give it a little wiggle as well, just to sort of break up the mud um, in there. And uh, yeah, do the trick. Obviously the advantage of core aeration is actually because it's much deeper. So if you look at uh, an aerator like that, you'll see that the cores go down sort of two, even two and a half inches. Um, and with this, the soil is quite firm. So really I'm struggling to get sort of an inch in. I mean, like I said a little while ago, just half an inch would still be better than nothing. Um, but if we can get down a little bit further, obviously we go as deep as we can with it. Okay, that's the aeration done. As you can see, I'm out of breath. It's a really good way of getting some exercise. Uh, they do do some uh, like a petrol powered or uh, even electric powered, I believe, um, aerators that you can buy, but they are ridiculously expensive. I think they're more for commercial use. Um, you can also rent them as well, but I've had a look and they're quite expensive to rent. So I find doing this uh, is, is a lot easier, but obviously I've got the advantage of having a very small lawn. If you've got a really large lawn, then it can take quite a long time. Uh, I mean, really, this takes me a good sort of 20 minutes probably to, to go through this. So if you look closely, you can see we've just punched basically holes into them, into the ground, as I say, about a foot, foot and a half uh, apart there. Um, and they're not immediately visible in some areas. But then if we go into our shaded area here, you can start to see, well, obviously punch those in. Um, and we've got a load here in the corner as well. Um, basically, where you have a lot of moss and the mud is sort of more damp, then I would say you need to put more holes in than other areas that are dry. So as I say, we've got a lot of moss and damp mud in this area, and this has only happened over the last couple of weeks, really. Um, so I want to make sure I've got a good load of aeration there as well. Now, when we put down the nanotodes, it will actually make quite a bit of mess because there's quite a lot of water. So the another advantage of doing this aeration really is to obviously give that water somewhere to go. But um, yeah, I'll be able to show you that a little bit later. So it's a few hours uh, later, and although it's not the evening, the uh, the sun is gone behind a load of clouds. So I actually think it's quite a good time to now get on and apply this nematodes. So we we'll head on to the kitchen and let's give this a go. Okay, so what we've got here is our leather jacket killer. So these are the nematodes. 
Um, as I say, you have to go onto the website and have a look and obviously work it out for your size of garden. Um, we've only got a 20 square foot garden, so it's very small. To be honest, this is actually quite a lot for our garden. And I think that's probably why these are quite effective for us because um, we've probably got a, you know, we've got a lot going into a very small area. Um, but do have a look at the website. As I say, I'll put the link in the description below. Um, I also recommend getting one of these miracle Grow feeders um, or, you know, another branded one, whatever it is. These are really good. Now, I will admit, this one's a little bit old. It started to leak a little bit. So when I'm using it, the water comes out of here. Um, I, but I will get another one. Um, but generally, yeah. This is a lifesaver when applying this stuff. So it's quite easy, take it out of the pack. Um, do open up the cardboard sleeve as well because there are some really good instructions inside. And what it will do here is obviously there's instructions on the back, but inside there's a little bit more information and you'll see this section here actually says application by garden hose applicator. So they actually recommend one of these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and then very carefully, I'm gonna use like a teaspoon to just get as much of it into here as possible. Now, when you open it up, if we have a look slowly, you'll see that a lot of it kind of sticks to the lid. Um, so what you'll have to do is scrape it off, um, but it takes a few minutes to do, but yeah, try and get as much obviously into the feeder as we can. As you can see there, this stuff can be quite messy. It is a powder, so it does go everywhere. That's okay, like I say, just try and get as much in there. But this is a little technique that I've been doing, is actually once you've put, got as much into there as you can, you'll have a load still left in the pack. Um, Pour some water in, look at that. Pour some water in. As soon as this stuff touches water, it turns to a liquid. So you can actually look, get most of that in there. So I'm just gonna do another go there as well, just to get those leftover bits at the top. And yeah, really just getting as much as we can in there. Now, once you've got it in there, we just need to fill it up to the line. So there's a max line here as well. So I'm just gonna top that up with some water. And then last step, what I like to do is just give it a little mix. Obviously, I'm gonna use the spoon that I've already used it with. This stuff mixes pretty well. As soon as, like I say, as soon as it touches water, it almost turns to a liquid anyway. Um, but I just like to give it, yeah, just give it a final little stir in case there are any sort of lumps in there. Makes it a little bit easier when it goes through the feeder. Then, simple job, put it onto the uh, the actual feeder itself. So we're just gonna screw that in, make sure that's level. There it is. So spin that round, obviously get it as tight as you can go. Um, we make sure that it's on unlock, obviously. And what you wanna do on top of this one is we've got an option for water only or water and feed. So obviously we wanna make sure that it's water and feed. And then what it'll do is it'll pour, obviously, a portion of this mixture through, mix it with the water um, to the right consistency as well. The other thing I'd recommend doing um, is actually setting this here to flat. Uh, it actually recommends that. The flat one is better for dispersion of the nematodes. So yeah, if you've got one of these, uh, check it's on the flat setting. Um, but that's it, so let's go outside. We'll hook this up to the hose um, and then we'll get it all set up and ready to go. Okay, hooked up to the hose. Right, the rule is with this, we need to spray it for eight minutes. And then once after the eight minutes, all of this liquid or the majority of it should have been dispersed. And then for a lawn, we need to do another 16 minutes to then give it a good soaking, get it to wash in. Now, if you read the back of the pack, uh, the instructions will be a little bit different for your size of lawns. You need to calculate it. To be honest, um, for this size of lawn, it's probably a little bit overkill. I probably don't need to do it for as long as I do. Um, but you know what? I've been doing it for eight years. It works really well. So I'm just going to keep on doing it. So let's give it a go. So our eight minute timer's up. So what I'm gonna now do is set it for another 16 minutes 
uh, and then give that another go. Um, that's, we actually done two coats of that lawn and we done the bed as well. So really we're looking to do another four, four coats um, and then it should be done. So that's it for today guys. We've actually cut the lawn as short as we could go. We've checked for scarification, we've done some aerating, and finally we put those nematodes uh, over the top as per instructions. Now in the description down below, I'm gonna leave more details about what we've talked about today, as well as links to the products that I've used. Um, so do check those out um, and let me know your thoughts as well. I'm really interested to know, have you tried this method? Uh, has it worked for you? Uh, do you try something different? Has it worked, has it not worked? Um, but either way, I hope that this video has been helpful. Please do like and subscribe this video if you have enjoyed the content and found it useful. Um, and then what I'll do, I'll check you in the next one.